friends, welcome to Lunch Break with Kia. I'm Kia and we go live every Wednesday at 12-ish and we address issues that impact the heart of a woman because I desire to encourage the hearts of women one word at a time. And so if you are new to this lunch break, I encourage you to hit the red subscribe button so that you don't miss an episode with me. And then also, if you're new, we have been talking about discovering the mystery of knowing God as father. And one of the ways that I believe you can come to know God as father is through his attributes. So today we are tackling the attribute of faithfulness. Um, and that's a term that you might have heard often uh, in if, if you've been a part of the church any length of time, people write songs about it, people um, talk about it all the time in messages, but we may not fully know what it means. So let me give you this definition um, of faithfulness, um, the quality of being faithful. So you're not supposed to describe a word or define a word with the word. Uh, so then I look up faithful and faithful is remaining loyal and steadfast. And that is certainly who God is to us. So I'm going to share with you seven ways to identify the faithfulness of God in your life. Um, so get your pencils ready. But first, I want to share with you the scripture from Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. And it says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. Uh, and I think it's important to note that um, God's compassion may not look the way that we desire it to look or that we think it's going to look, but that doesn't mean it is um, not existent. This is saying to us that God is faithful. He will remain loyal to us. He will be steadfast to us. And I'm going to show you seven ways that you can um, identify the faithfulness of God in your life. If you're in a season where you feel like God is not faithful at all, um, I'm going to share some suggestions with you. The first one would be to journal. Uh, everyone's not a journaler, but you don't have to be a writer to be a journaler. Journal journaler. Anyways, um, oftentimes when we write in a journal in one particular season of our life, and then we live life, and then we go back to that journal. When we read through it, we discover God answered several prayers, or he came through, or the situation was resolved, or God did X, Y, Z in our lives. Um, but sometimes we forget if we don't write it down, if we don't revisit those difficult seasons, those painful seasons in our lives. Um, and it's not enough to just journal, but you actually have to go back and read it. Y'all, I've been journaling off and on probably since high school. I, I don't want to go back and read it, though. <laughs> I don't know what's in there, you know, but go back and read through your journals and see, recount all the ways that God has been faithful to you. He's been steadfast. He has been um, loyal to you in spite of our own behavior. In spite of the things that we might do, uh, we don't have to perform to earn God's love. It, it remains steadfast. OK, so that's the first thing. Journal and then go back and read it. The second one is it's going to sound crazy. Look at your other nine toes. Now, I was talking to a friend. You know who you are. If you watch this, uh, I told you it was a great illustration, but she was telling me about going out of town uh, to a beachy place. And um, she wanted to get her, her toes done so that your toes look nice. You, you can relate to this. If you are a woman, you can relate to this story uh, of wanting your toes to look nice when you're on the beach. Anyways, she did everything she could after she got her pedicure to let her toes dry. And lo and behold, something falls on her big toe. Arg. Something falls on her big toe and smudges the the um, pedicure just on that or the the nail polish just on that big toe. And she was saying that God spoke to her and said, you know, this is how you are in life, that you focus on that 
big toe, but you have nine other toes that look great. <laughs> Which I know a lot of you are like, I'm going back to the nail. No, shop and get them to fix that big toe. And I understand that if you have the time to do that. But in our lives, you know, myself included, we spend so much time looking at the smudge on that big toe. It looks horrific and horrendous. But we do have nine other toes. And I'm saying, I'm speaking metaphorically, but what are the nine toes in your life? The things that are going well, the places where you do see God's hand clearly, the favor, the blessings, the, the open doors. Where are those places and how can you um, prioritize those nine other toes over that one big toe that got smudged? You know, um, it, it's a hard work for me too, but I think that was such a vivid lesson for me not to focus on that one thing when you have nine other things. This is true for all of us in our lives, no matter what we're facing right now, there are countless reasons to be thankful uh, for what God has done. Y'all, I'm speaking to myself. Trust me, trust me, I am speaking to myself right now. Okay, so number one is journal and then actually go back and read it. Number two is look at your nine other good toes. Such a great illustration. Okay. And then number four, nope, number three, sorry. Identify ways that God has been faithful in the Bible. I think sometimes with God, you know, we kind of say, oh, that is the God in the Bible is different from the God that we serve right here. So then we read these stories where he's doing miraculous things like, um, I don't know, rescuing the children of Israel time and time again or vindicating someone or something. You know, we read these stories from Noah and Esther and Jonah and I can't think of all Paul. You know, we just go through the Bible and we kind of disconnect those people and that God from the God that we serve. But it's the same God. It's the same God. And when we allow ourselves to believe and accept that, then we can say to ourselves, self, if he did it for Jonah, if he did it for Ruth, if he did it for Esther, if he did it for Paul, if he did it for David, if he did it for whomever, he can do it for me too. Um, so number three would be to recount all of the ways that God has shown himself to be faithful in the Bible. If we don't do anything but look at the children of Israel, OMG, they were so wicked and so wayward and God would step in and, and tell them, get rid of all your idols, do all the things. And they would do it, not even give him full obedience, you know, and then end right, end right back up in idolatry. And God would come in and, and chastise them or send a prophet or whatever, whatever, get rid of the king, get a new king. And they would end up back in the same situation again. But God remained faithful to them. He was steadfast to them. He was loyal to them. This is the same God that is faithful and steadfast and loyal to us, right? Okay. Uh, number four, think of 50 things that you are thankful for. I did this this morning in my sanctuary, the bathroom, you know, just began to recount all of the things that I was thankful for. And as I was doing it, I could see the times that God had been thankful or had been faithful, excuse me, in my life. I could see it clearly because there are certain blessings that I now have in my life that are a tangible example of God's faithfulness, God's steadfast love, God's loyalty to me. In my disobedience and in my uh, doubt, in my times of confusion and rebellion and everything else, God has been faithful to me. Um, sometimes you can put this in a a glad journal where all you have in there are things or a thankfulness journal. Everything you have in there is just things that you are thankful for when you find yourself in a slump. You could just go back and read it. 
and recount the faithfulness of God in your life. Okay, so we have number one, journal and then go back and read it. Number two, look at your other nine toes. Number three, identify ways that God has been faithful in the Bible. Number four, think of 50 things you are thankful for. And number five, worship. Worship can be a word that is, it, it, you, you may not understand it or understand how to do it in your car or in, in your own home. This is what worship is. It's the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for God. Um, and worship, for me, it tends to encourage my soul in a way nothing else does. You know, as I'm listening to the words, I'm allowing the words to uh, impact my heart, impact my mind, impact my thinking. Um, and and elevate me from where I am to where I need to be in terms of my perspective, in terms of you know how I view God. Um, so I wanted to share this song with you. Um, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna put it put it in the description section of the video. But this is one of my favorite songs by Maverick City Music. It's called "The Story I'll Tell," and I'm gonna tell you the line that, you know, I love. Well, I love the whole song, but <laughs> um, these are the words. The hour is dark and it's hard to see what you are doing here in the ruins and where this will lead. Have you ever felt like you were sitting in ruins? Oh my goodness. Oh, but I know that down through the years, here it is right here. I'll look on this moment and see your hand on it and know you were here. That's it. That's the that's recounting the faithfulness of God. No matter where you're sitting, what you're facing, what you are experiencing, you can say, you know what? Mm -mm. No, I know one day I will look back on this moment and I'll see the hand of God all throughout my life because he's faithful and he's loyal. This is the rest of the, the chorus. Oh, the rest of the verse and then the chorus. Um, and I'll testify of the battles you've won, how you were my portion when there wasn't enough. And I'll testify of the seas that we've crossed, the waters you parted, the waves that I've walked. Okay. Then it goes into the chorus. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there. Y'all. And you know what? I, I have been playing this song over and over on YouTube. And I decided, let me go and read the comments. And you would not believe how many people have poured their hearts out for this one song alone of just saying, I listened to this song over and over when I was battling cancer or I was going through uh, X, Y, Z, hard thing. You know, um, one woman was even talking about needing, I think she needed a heart transplant and they had given her a certain amount of days to, to survive. Um, even in that, I was like, man, I'm, I'm encouraged. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I see the faithfulness of God in other people's lives. Just reading, I encourage you to do that. I hope there's nothing crazy on there now that I'm, I'm sending you over there, but I don't think so. Um, okay, here's the rest of it. The next verse says, believing gets hard when options are few. When I can't see what you're doing, I know that you're proving, love this line, you're the God who comes through. I'll probably listen to this when, when I'm through with this video. Oh, but I know that over the years, I'll look back on this moment and see your hand on it and know you were here. I hope, I pray this for you. I pray this for you, that you would see the faithfulness of God throughout your life. God is faithful. He is steadfast. His love is steadfast. He is loyal. He is true to you, no matter what you're facing. Okay? So worship. That might, that might not be your jam. That's, that's totally my jam. I will listen to this song like over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, but find a song that, that does that for you, where you're elevated from where your mental state is to where God 
would want you to be, where you are able to recount the faithful faithfulness of God in your life, in the lives of others, uh, in, in the pages of scripture. Um, okay, number six, do something for someone who cannot pay you back. And this is the great, great time to do it because it's the holiday season and it's the season of giving. Um, you know, this, this happened yesterday, or I, I try to do this. Um, you know, I, I feel like more and more we're, we're seeing more and more homeless people or families that are on the corner uh, with signs with their kids, with their kids on the corner. That's, this is no judgment. It's, it's just to say, I think this is a sign of the times of where we are in, in our world in terms of just um, people really feeling the financial pinch. Um, and I um, came to a stoplight yesterday and there was a man literally in the street and he looked like he was on his last. I don't, I don't really carry cash. I don't carry cash. Um, but I reached, had my kids give me a water bottle and I handed him a water bottle and he was grateful to receive that. That's just one small example. But I think it jolts us when we see somebody who has a plight that appears to be uh, more challenging than the plights that we're facing in our in our own lives. It does something to us to be able to bless someone, to get our focus off of ourselves and to encourage somebody else or to bless somebody else. Um, that is one way to see how God has been faithful to us by doing something for someone else that cannot repay you back. OK, so let's see. Um about to get to the last one. Number one, journal and then go back and read it. Number two, look at your other nine toes. Number three, identify the ways that he has been faithful. God has been faithful in the Bible. Number four, think of 50 things. It could be 100 that you are thankful for. Number five, worship. Um, and I'm going to link that song in the bottom. Number six, do something for someone who cannot pay you back. And number seven, ask someone else how they have seen God's faithfulness in your life. Um, yesterday, I was talking with a friend that um, went overseas and got sick from some infection, you know, and it just was a situation that spiraled out of control. Um, just had to be in the hospital for several days in a foreign country. And she was just talking about how horrible it was. But in the middle of her story, she began to recount um, the story of a, a woman who had great faith that was in the hospital room with her and how impacted she had been by hearing this woman. And so I was saying to her, my friend, you know, I was like, man, even though you experienced boom, 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 look at God, look at, look at the hand of God right there, right there, right there, right there. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at how God blessed you in spite of what you experienced. Sometimes y'all, we can't see what God is doing in our lives or we don't see God's faithfulness in our lives. We see ruins. We can see what you were doing here in the ruins. You know, sometimes that's kind of where we are. But when we ask someone and say, hey, where do you see God's faithfulness in my life? Do you see God's faithfulness in my life? I would venture to say that there is someone, a trusted friend that communes with the Lord, that could look at your life and enumerate several ways where they see God's hand, God actively working in your life, God's faithfulness. They can see God's loyalty to you, his steadfast love in your life. They can see it when you can't. Sometimes we need to enlist the help and the support of somebody else that's not over there in the ruins with us, but that can say, you know what? I see God there, 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 and there, right? Okay. Y'all, now, if you don't see the faithfulness of God after you've done at least one or two of these things, I can't help you. <laughs> but I'm that confident that you will see the faithfulness of God in your life through one, one or all of these, right? Because God is faithful. 
He's not going to be faithful to one person and then not faithful to someone else. He's faithful, period. I hope that's an encouragement to you. And um, let me just pray for you and see you next week. God, thank you so much for those who have tuned in. I pray, Lord, if there are individuals that are watching this video and they are struggling to see the faithfulness of God in their life. God, I pray that by doing some of these seven things, Lord, that they would see how you have been faithful and you are currently faithful in their lives, no matter what they are facing. I pray that it would be an encouragement and a blessing to them. God, and I pray for every person that is also trying to understand the mystery of knowing you as father. God, I pray that you would, um, Help them to take all of the limitations off of you, God, and embrace you as a heavenly father, God. This is how you chose to reveal yourself to us through the pages of scripture, God. And I pray that every single person would be able to embrace that, to see you as that in their lives, God, that it would revolutionize their relationship with you, God. And I honor you, God. I bless you, God. And um, I thank you for it sitting with us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope that was a blessing to you. I want you to know that if you are interested in getting more from me, I do have a free gift for you that um, you can simply just click the link in the description section of this video. And also, uh, I encourage you to purchase will pre-order my new book, Overcoming Father Wounds, Exchanging Your Pain for God's Perfect Love. And you can find the link to that book on Amazon, or you can just do a Google search and find it anywhere books are sold. Thank you so much for spending time with me, and I look to see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.